There's a place called a gin mill way down in the slums. There's a place called a gin mill way down in the slums. My baby goes that night and stays till the morning comes. All right. Hey, guys, how's it going? Good. How are Hello. you doing? Good. Doing well. Wow. I feel like it's been a while since we've recorded together. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, we had some holidays and shit. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's not that we weren't together. Yeah. It's just we weren't recording. But cuddled up in Brendan's bed is not the same as sitting around the table recording together. <laughs> it's, <What>? it's definitely <laughs> a step up. I was in Chicago. What the hell are you guys doing in my bed while I was gone? <laughs> don't worry about like it. Like you don't know. <laughs> So, hey, we're back here at Four Day Array once again. Uh, welcome to the show, Brian Graham. Hey, thanks, Hunter. I appreciate it. Glad to be here. So it's kind oh. of a quiet Tuesday here, though. Uh, normally, I don't see it quite this quiet. Do you, is I it know. kind of just because it's right after the holidays, I'm I guessing? I think everyone has a hangover, is hey. what I'm yeah. thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's still dehydrated. Mm-hmm. We should be in here drinking some beer. Right, yeah. exactly. You just put ice cubes in there, and that'll do mm-hmm. it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Water, alcohol, there you go. And, I mean, we've had torrential downpours in, on January 3rd. Yeah. So, I mean, that doesn't mm-hmm. probably help anything. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, bad weather, you know, low attendance. Yes. So, so how was New Year's here, though? Uh, it was really great. We had a good time. Uh, we were actually busier than I thought. You know, people are looking for special things. We just had so much going on this year, we didn't have a chance to plan for that. Yeah. So, uh, we were open normal hours. It's, it died about, you know, 930 or so. But, yeah, I mean, during the day, we had a nice crowd in here. So, good. it was good. People filling their growlers and, you know, preparing for their evening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. I, had a, I think they're filling their growlers for the next day. Well, there's that too. Yes. Yeah, I had a crowler of coffee blonde on Christmas. Mm, My wife nice. apparently snuck over here sometime Christmas Eve and got it and put it in the fridge and hid it for me. So nice. that was a nice Christmas morning. Waking up to some four day Ray coffee blonde. That's never a bad way to start your day. No, no. not at all. Not. Little eggs, it bacon, dep- and some coffee blonde. Yes. Yes. It depends. There's a, there's a point where you should probably not not be drinking. Beer every morning, I'm thinking. That yeah, might eventually get in trouble. Yeah. Every morning. <laughs> uh, well, vacations and holidays is okay. Yeah. It's acceptable. Yeah, for sure. I mean, exactly. Even one beer in the morning is not going to kill you. <laughs> I was going to say, wait. <laughs> this coming from the guy that made a rule on the man trip that we had to take a shot before 11 every day. It's a man trip. He said it's never a bad way to start a day. Well, no. it, is, <laughs> it is if you do it every day. And, <laughs> and then at lunchtime. And, yeah, I mean, your boss might eventually kind of. And that was oh, the only thing that it. was going to get us going on the men's <laughs> trip. So well, yeah. We had to have that shot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. It was delicious. It was a great way to start the day. No, it wasn't. Gave Jordan the warm belly, and he was ready to rock and roll. Well, yeah. you, I mean, you really need to think of a better name than man trip, though. Well, it was a trip with all men. I know. It sounds similar to, like, meat fest. <laughs> well, it's, <laughs> it kind of is. It's pretty much. It exactly. just, it's, a, it's a roving meat fest. Mm. We kind of. It's a right. roving meat fest. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's we not, go, that's we go city to city. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> and we're adding we're adding numbers this year. We're going to have like six or seven, maybe eight of us going. Yeah, more yeah. sausage. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Our nice. sausage coming to a city yeah. near you. Oh. <laughs> Which, if this comes out first, we may be uh, in, in Memphis this year, I believe. Mm-hmm. Oh, Nashville and that's Memphis. And nice. I didn't think we that's were doing Nashville. Trip. I thought we and were just doing Memphis. it's a good time Memphis. to go. What's that? I didn't think we were doing Nashville. Well, we got to drive through Nashville, so well, if we, we see yeah. something, yeah. we may stop. We drive through it. I mean, okay. Yeah. But I'll tell you this, I did notice when I was doing all the research that Nashville has like six new breweries yeah, since we were there last year. Yeah, they stuff going on down there, yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. They only had like two or three last year. Yeah, but the breweries and weren't, they weren't good. very good. Yeah. But now they have like six more, so. You did see uh, you did see our buddies down in Gallatin, though, the new law. They yes, can, uh, that's what I was going to talk about. They can do about. higher gra- Oh, yep. I'm sorry. I didn't no, mean that's, to, no yeah. I'm glad you brought it up because I want to talk about that tonight. Go for it. Yeah. Well, we'll, get, we'll get there a little bit later, yeah. I guess. No, you brought it up, so, well, it's cool <laughs> because... We were talking about that at Briar Scratch because, I mean, he helped and his papa helped, right? Yeah. Kind of, I mean, really forefront this, but yeah. um, Tennessee now is, you can 10.1% alcohol now, nice. so you don't have to have the, the high gravity high law. Gra- so higher right. gravity oh, laws nice. have changed. Cool. They reclassified beer yeah. or something, and finally. Mm. So, six, six, two to Just ten so you one, to 10, so. yeah. So you yeah. can still get, yeah. you're not getting those 18s, and the, which are kind of nasty anyways. But, you know, depends the on the tens are, I think the 10's a good balance. It depends then, on yeah. what time of the day you start. If it's 20 <laughs> years old, maybe it might. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. right. Yeah. If it's been mm-hmm. aging for a long time, but sure. Some but that's going to open up a lot for the breweries there. That's very cool. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah. Just so you know, Brian, when we went down to Briar Scratch Brewery last year, we noticed all the beers were really low, really low alcohol. And we're like, so what's going on? I mean, we come from Indiana where we're used to everything being six, seven, eight, you know, and above. Which was out in Nashville, too, wasn't it? Yeah. And, uh, 
we asked him, and he said, oh, well, we have a high-gravity law. We're not allowed to make beer over a certain percent. And we're like, oh, well, that sucks. And, I think and then as we went to other breweries, we realized, <laughs> well, yep, they're all like it, less right? than 5% right. or 6% or whatever. You can, but it's, it, it, it falls under liquor law, not right. beer yeah. law, yeah. not yeah. the beer and wine liquor. law. You had to have a special license. You couldn't, yeah, you had, to, you had yeah, to have a liquor license. It doesn't fall under that do. license. And right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Which is yep. a yeah. huge deal. Let's make it complicated for people to do business. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, right. Exactly. Yep. I mean, up here in Indiana, most people that sell over a 10 or 11%, they limit their customers on it anyway. Yeah. It's usually a small pour and usually limited to one or two right. per person per night. You yeah. know? So I don't see what the big deal is anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, if, if the establishment's going to be responsible about it, which they should be, yeah, I mean, it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, well, and, and, you know, that limits you on your barrel aging programs and different things like that when you can't do some of the higher gravity stuff. And, again, it's just a pain in the butt. It's yeah. just one more hoop you have to jump yeah. through. But I'm, you know, we see it all the time. You, you go into a dive bar and people are drinking swill and they're getting shit faced on, you know, <laughs> they're drinking 24 light beers and they're, they're not having a good time. They're not having good beer. And then you don't see that when you go into a nice brewery, you go into a 40 Ray and people are having a good time. You don't see drunk idiots having fights. You know what I mean? Except right now. Exactly. They're having a couple well, of very that's good. That's later in the show, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Right. Well, we can have a brawl if you want one. Nice. <laughs> cool. Well, but, no, but they're drinking, new metal they're chairs drinking here. good beer, but a couple of very nice brews and going yeah. home and they're not doing it. I mean, it's, it's, a different, it's a different, you know, atmosphere. Oh, we, we saw that at Brewfest, too, when we talked to the police officers. And I said, so anybody getting rowdy today? He goes, no, we love the craft beer festivals. He goes, it's so much different than anything else we do because everybody here is enjoying their beer. They're sipping their beer. They're enjoying what they're drinking. They're not just here slamming down beers to get shit-faced and act stupid. Even the cops know that when they were at the brew fest, which is awesome. That's good to know, you mm-hmm. know, that yeah, for sure. these brew fests don't have that kind of clientele that are just there to get hammered because yeah. everybody wants to stay somewhat sober to be able to taste the next beer. Because let's face it, you know, you have six or seven craft beers, the next three or four craft beers, you don't know what the hell they taste like. Still yeah. thinking about this brawl because <laughs> Brian's got new ropes around the whole beer area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We um, can just jump right fast. off the there's, top. There's level. metal mm. chairs that we can use, and climb and uh, yeah, we can climb, climb up on tank. some ladders, and <laughs> and we are doing video today too. Uh, yes. Power bomb I mean. on the table. <laughs> I have a feeling that it's pretty much anything goes until you start actually touching his tanks, and then you're dead. Oh, I don't touch yeah. any other man's tanks. <laughs> it, it is a anymore. personal thing. That's true. <laughs> You know, maybe some always light petting is fine. Always guard your ta- <laughs> <laughs> always guard your tank. I mean tank. <laughs> so what do we have coming up for 2017 for FDR? Any new brews coming up? Anything you're got in the works? Yeah, so uh, we're trying to keep up with production right now. Yeah. A lot of our, um, you know, high IBU stuff is really taking up a lot of space in, in the fermentation process. Um, as you guys know, those take a little bit longer just because of the dry hopping. And, I mean, they're just, they sell well. Yeah. And it just doesn't matter what we're putting out. The Hobo series we did, um, number one, that was a New Zealand hopped IPA. So it's uh, Dr. Rudy, uh, Pacific Jade. Uh, so you've got your tropical flavors there. People are really digging that a lot. We're almost out of it. I just finished one. It was delicious. Uh, oh, thank you. And that really nice citrus hits you in the face, that aroma. But a really delicious, well balanced beer. I loved it. And he said, I didn't hit it at first. And mm-hmm. Shannon said, What's that? Or the Hunter guy said, uh, <laughs> You catch anything <laughs> sweet in the back end there? And I like to catch sweet things in the back end. So I said, well, yeah, What is that? <laughs> he he really does. Mango. Yep. Yeah. Which is uh, different. Hey, you've yeah. seen a lot. You're starting to see more mango in beers. I'm starting to see mango mm-hmm. habanero beers and stuff. But uh, it, it's, a, it's not overly powering sweet so it's a a, a nice one yeah and it has a nice tartness to it Uh, a lot of the stuff that's coming out of europe right now um some of the more of the melon uh you're seeing more of those types of uh fruits coming out of some of those hops over there so i think you know there's some interesting things coming down the pipe i think for you know just hop usage in general and i think people are demanding that and not necessarily the ibus that go along with it necessarily um you know we've got a recipe for a pale ale that uses I mean, these two are really popular, but they go really well together, is uh, Simcoe and Nelson. And, I mean, you have you pair the grapefruit with that white grape. I mean, mm. it's just an interesting combination of the two. But it's a pale ale. It's not an IPA. It's not meant to be totally bitter. It's meant to just really showcase the flavor of those two together. Right. Uh, and it almost comes across as, uh, in you know, people always compare wine to beer. But, I mean, it's sort of like the Sauvignon Blanc of 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 uh, beer because of the grapefruit and the and the, gro- the white grape that you get in right. those two. But it's just interesting what you can come up with, you know, as you explore some of the new flavors that, um, you know, these hops are producing. Yeah. And it's really cool. 
but you know they do take a little bit longer just to get some of those nuances and so you know we're just running into some um, you know time issues and I think you know we're, we're trying to you know branch out and do some more Belgian stuff here coming up this year so you know we're, we're talking about uh, you know possibly adding some tanks and space in here right. you know not from a volume necessarily but more of a hey let's we got to make sure that we can keep up you know with the demand of some of the more higher hop stuff right. and you know fulfill some of the cool stuff that we want to do with the malt focused areas and, right. and, and whatnot so but uh, you know that's that's what we're working on right now, and uh, you know we weren't we're going to start more of our beer dinner programs uh, coming up this year too. So we've got one that we're going to be uh, promoting here shortly for um, Valentine's Day, and we're going to do a beer dinner, put some couples in a room, a lot of beer aficionados, and just do like a four or five course meal, uh, including dessert, and pair all those with our beers and just walk through those and nice. uh, have the chef do some presentations on the food too. So. You know, that's what's great about having the Scratch Kitchen next door. I mean, it just really affords us some cool stuff that we can yeah. do like that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yep. So one thing I wanted to touch on, though, that you said was the fruit flavors in the hops. I think a lot of novice beer drinkers get that confused and think you're actually infusing beer with fruit. Yeah, they do. And I, I always thought that, too. I tasted beer and I tasted mango or something in it. I'm like, oh, they threw some in there. But that's not the case. A lot of times that all comes from the hop itself. Um, and I think that's where people get confused. I hear the term fruit beer, which I hate the term fruit beer. Um, I don't really <laughs> feel like fruit beer should be a beer classification, um, you know, because the hops put off a lot of those fruit flavors, not actually fruit in the beer. Right. Yeah, exactly. And that's something I think our uh, listeners need to know is that, you know, it, it, it's more about the hop, not an actual fruit being shoved in your beer. Yeah, I was at an establishment and I ordered a grapefruit jungle. And the lady's like, oh, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's got grapefruit in it. And I'm like, mm, not so much. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I appreciate your enthusiasm for the craft beer, but this is all about the hops. Yeah. It was really funny. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I just had to chuckle. Like, nope, that's not why they call it grapefruit. Not juice. pouring the grapefruit juice into the fermenter. No, <laughs> no, they're not doing that. No. <laughs> Now, when we made our uh, we made our orange beer, we did make we use real oranges, but yeah. that was a little the different. Saison, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh man, yeah, saison with orange. How did it turn yeah. out? Very good. It was one of our best ones. Yeah. yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. nice. Very good. We just haven't brewed forever. Honey, so. honey orange. Yes. Honey and orange. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It was actually yeah definitely one of our better ones. That was delicious. Mm-hmm. Need still need to tweak it obviously, but it was for our, our first run. It was definitely. Well, they were one all our, they were all better before the beers. infection. <laughs> they were, weren't they? <laughs> well, everything's better before it gets infected. <laughs> well, Some of them are a happy mistake, but yeah. Yeah. but she regret it afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> I think they have antibiotics for that. <laughs> that, might, that might taste bad in a, the beer. A cream you can rub on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wish it was that easy to clean the uh, fermenters. Yeah, for sure. Just rub a little cream on it. It's all good now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Didn't quite work that way. Try it, I guess. But, you know, it might not work that way. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it's clean. <laughs> is it clean now? Oh, I mean, you always hope it is. I, I, so I won't know till we brew. Oh, okay. Exactly. Well, that's disturbing. <laughs> well, there's not like a test pad. It's not like I could ask the fermenter. Excuse me, Mr. Yeah, fermenter. Those, are those you still infected? No, no, can't you do the? You can wipe it or what are they can't called? Can't you do the where you the you, you breed the culture? The little, you know, you take oh, a swab yeah, and you swab, put it on the little put it on the dish oh, in yeah. the dish and mm-hmm. you wait to see if anything grows. Yeah. Petri dish. Yeah. Don't yeah. you remember? Yeah. Yeah. But they have those. Don't you remember senior year in high school? And if they turn a certain color or something like that, right? Like the sanitizer. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. We'll huh. look into that. Yeah, ours would have turned before it got to the actual. Once we got it close, <laughs> <laughs> when you have giant white chunky ships floating in your beer, you know you have a problem. Yeah, yeah we white stuff is never good. No. <laughs> <laughs> we learned this. Yeah. Did we? Did we try to? Did we try to cultivate that bacteria for anything? No. <laughs> try to kill it. We did take a drink though. <laughs> yeah, we well, for your it. wild series, you could definitely probably use it in some capacity. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> we're not that good yet. <laughs> I don't, that's a few years away. <laughs> I think we've established that. <laughs> <laughs> what else is new on tap? I know we we tried the hobo. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. We've the half cocked is back. Okay, uh, that's our uh, pale ale right now. That's uh, predominantly Centennial and Cascade. So you got you know a little nice orange. Uh, and citrus going on there. Uh, the snow shed, I don't know if we ha- I think we ha- had that on. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah we had that it. on. Yeah, yeah, it was, yep. like, just on. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, obviously, we're coming into the season where we're 
putting that on special because yeah. wow we're in january and who wants to drink a spice ale in january <laughs> my <laughs> wife mm. oh well there you oh, go remember what? i came in and got the oh, girl yeah, she right. loved it still, well hey it's four dollar it. pints and eight dollar growler fills we're until it's gone yeah. they're still go. due mm-hmm. for another couple horrible polar vortex i'm sure 20 we are. degree below oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. When we get back Things towards the end of february okay. yeah that's how everything oh, is it seems like we always yeah no i'm not looking forward to it or anything no that's porter stout season for me though when it's cold i want stout yeah, well, I, I do too. All the way I do too. Good. Yeah, the Prince Igor is drinking really well right now. Yep. It's a very sneaky 8%, nice deep roast. I mean, yeah. it's it's really tasty. Yeah, it's it's great. Delicious. Yeah, you don't have to let it age or anything. I mean, it's uh, it's good right out of the gate. I mean, you could, I guess. Well. So are you guys doing any of the, uh, the unpasteurized, unfiltered type of beers here that still age as you uh, cellar them? All of our beer is unpasteurized, and all of it is unfiltered. Okay. You're talking about like casket age stuff, or Where, well, if you put it in a bottle, like if you bomber it, can you cellar your beer and let it age? Ah, we don't naturally? have, we haven't, we have not produced anything yet r- that's high enough in gravity that we would consider doing that with. Okay, yeah, yeah, that I would mean, be my question. Yeah, yeah, we're we're, I would say that we would probably get around to that probably sometime this year, but like I said, until we are able to stabilize production and mm-hmm. you know kind of level out and and let mitch you know be able to have some creativity as opposed to hey let's just try to keep up with what we're doing right now yeah you know once we get to that point i think we'll have uh, a little bit more leeway in being able to do stuff i've like just that. seen a lot of bombers out lately especially it seems to be this time of year where they all release yeah. them yeah. yeah um and people i think buy them let them set for a year drink them every mm-hmm. year on christmas as a tradition i do that myself um, so I was just curious if you guys Yeah, the wine. barley wines will be out here probably in the next, like, month or so uh, that, yeah. you know, people will be. You know, it's funny, though. A lot of the American stuff anymore, you know, I remember when, um, you know, Old Guardian would come out and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'd lay it down. And I'm like, you know, the hops are way better in this, or you know, when it first comes out. It was just more malty. And if you're looking for some hops, I mean, you really want to drink that when it comes out. So. Right. I mean, I stopped aging those. Now, don't get me wrong, the Bigfoot, you lay that down and it's all good and, you know, I can do that. But I, I kind of want to drink, you know, the, some of those barley wines r- that are when American r- right when they come out. Right. And, you know, and I think you're seeing that, I mean, a lot of these guys, they're like, hey, just drink it now. Don't, don't yeah. worry about it because, you know, the hops, they just, they're volatile mm-hmm. and you're just going to lose them over time. Right. It's not going to be the same beer. I haven't been able to sell her one yet because I'm gonna, I want to drink it. <laughs> I don't. I mean, that's and I like. I want. I like what it tastes like right now. So I'm. I'm good, man. And the Let expedition stout. I really like. I like aging that one. Yeah. Uh, the. Um, oh, the. Uh, oh, what is the the stock ale, uh, from North Coast? Man. Stock ale. Really? Yeah. Oh man, that's it's really good. Really. Yeah. Yep. Having that thing two or three one. years old, it's really tasty. Sanitarium yeah. is the one I do. I buy sanitarium every year, and yep. then I. Age it for a year and drink it on Christmas as well. Yeah, yeah didn't so buy yeah, us that's any. That's great. <laughs> I bought Expedition Stout. I'm going to do it this time. I'm going to put it away. I put it away for a week. <laughs> a week. <laughs> I, and then you like, really put it man, away. Man, this is so much better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I literally carried it for an entire year. It sat there and taunted me, and I, I kept through with it. And it was damn good. And the, the number one seller over in the uh, restaurant is the IPA, and then right behind that is the blonde. But over here, I mean, the blonde is like four or five down, and then you got you know all the IPA all and, the and every you know, and all the other stuff. So the blonde mm-hmm. doesn't do as well here as it does over there, which is interesting because yeah. I mean, literally, we're on the same property. Mm-hmm. But just when people come in to buy growlers and take yeah. those out, like no one's filling a growler blonde. That's I mean, interesting. It's just they're not. Hmm. Right. And those are the people that have probably been in the craft scene for a while. They come over here, they right. already know what they want. Yeah. So yeah. they're feeling here. People in the restaurant are like, ooh, I want something like this. I want something lighter. Yeah, I want do you something. have some light? You know, yeah. I don't like bitter beer, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting to see, you know, when people go out to eat and what they do versus, you know, people to come into a growler, you know, hmm. type of situation or a brewery situation, what they do and what the consumption looks like there. So it's pretty cool to see that. If I have my growler in hand, chances are I already know what I'm putting in my growler when I walk in the door. Yeah. Unless something Unless I haven't you get had there comes and it's up. gone. <laughs> yeah. Ah, shit. Yeah, exactly. Or if it's up. gone or I see yeah. something new came up, like some new stout or something, I might be like, oh, wait. Okay, never mind. I'm, I want that instead. But normally I know what I'm getting as I walk into somewhere yeah. mm-hmm. with yeah. that growler. Well, even yeah, sooner yeah. than that, most people, if you've already bought a growler and you've gotten to that stage in your beer drinking, 
you're educated a little better. You're you know you're right. you're thinking ahead to what you want and what your tastes yeah. are. Yeah, it's not like well I'm gonna go to the liquor store and hey let me just start rolling through and see yeah. what I haven't tried. Mm-hmm. You you're okay. I got a growler. I'm going to this specific establishment. I know what I want. Yeah, right. I know I'm walking out with the coffee blonde. So when yeah. I get there, yeah. I'm gonna try something else they have on. But I haven't tried, but I know I'm walking out with my girl or a coffee blonde or right, right. IP, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Usually you do know. You know but you yeah. know those people those people that are walking in with that growl or yeah. one or two or three of them, you know they've taken the they've, – they've been around. They've been doing this a little longer. They're not just newbies. Right. You rarely see newbies buy a growler of anything. Yeah. Uh, you know, you might see some college kids and, or, you know, freshly 21, 22 who like this stuff. And are taking back a growler maybe down after the weekend to go back down you know, yeah, to school right. or over something like that. But Or they're coming up on the uh, cheap growl fill day. But yeah, things yep. like that. But mm-hmm. still, you know, that's you know, but more often when you see someone with a growler in hand, they're, they've been in the scene for a little while and have a little education. Yeah. And you mm-hmm. usually have a good conversation with them, too, about yeah, you for know, sure. what beers they like and all that. Mm-hmm. Oh, you mentioned the growl fill day. So, I mean, we've in- implemented a couple of uh, just fun things. So Fridays now... We've got $6 fills of select beers. So Fridays, you can do that. And then uh, today we just started our BYO mug. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. So that's you so bring, cool. bring yeah. in whatever vessel up to 32 ounces, oh, on-premise see. consumption, 4 bucks. That's 32 ounces. So, you know, you know awesome. bring it in. We're, we're fine with it. It's okay. You know, we, we're not going to take any of those 64-ounce Polar Pop, like, <laughs> you know, oh. gas station <laughs> coffee mugs that are insulated. We're not doing those. But, you know, if it was 32 ounces, we'd do that. If you had a boot, we'd probably fill that up. You know, you know, we might even get to you free if you drank out of the actual boot. I don't know. We you know, a, that, that would yeah. be something that would be cool. We have a boot. But, yeah. I'll, I'll, so, I'll pay the challenge accept. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bring in your Star Wars mug that everyone laughs at you for, and you can fill it here for four bucks. That's so, awesome. point out yeah, we're, we're, so we're doing that on Tuesday. You so. point out those people that laugh at my Star Wars mug because I'm going to beat some ass. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say though, four dollars is a great price for a pint of craft beer. Yeah, four dollars yeah. for a thirty-two ounce craft beer is it's ridiculous. Yeah, that's yep. awesome. Yeah, yep, yeah. yeah. So we, 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 you know, you got that person that's gonna come in and try to take advantage of it. So oh, we yeah. had to, we had to limit it somehow. We're like, yeah. okay, we're willing to do up to thirty-two ounces per serving. Most people are reasonable. Is it? You know, you got the Stein that's like twenty. Yeah. You know, whatever that you know the guys had on the shelf for fifteen years. Like, oh hey, let's dust this thing off and actually. But that's cool. Do guy, something you, with I think we'll start seeing that people bringing in cool Steins stuff. Yeah, have been just. We sick. already had some guys bring some stuff in today. It yeah. was really cool to see that. You you, know, hey, nice. social media works. That's are cool. Are you yeah. taking yeah. pictures <laughs> of it and putting it up on your? You know, pic- we probably should. But take pictures of the cool Steins coming in. Well, I'm going to leave st- that to the marketing department. Stein of the Month Club. <laughs> yeah, right. Stein of the Month Club. Well, they get, they get so since we don't want to have to, like, hang the, you know, the Oh, no, I meant for right? the media. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. On that that would probably be a good part on our album up on Facebook, on our yeah. part to be able to do, you know, hey, get your picture taken. Is it just yeah. one yeah. Stein fill, or can I, like, go back and get another 30? No, there, there's no limit. Okay, it's just we, 32 we, ounces it, per yeah, serving. Yeah, you, you just can't get any. No, see, come on, Patrick. See, like, you're taking this, and you're like, hey, bring in a 32 ounce. No, your vessel can be up to 32 right. ounces. Yeah. But I can refill it more than once. Yes, you can. That's yeah, there's no limit on refills. What they were worried about was the guy going out in his garage, finding his five-gallon bucket. Oh, no, I know. Figuring out a way to attach a handle <laughs> no, to a five-gallon bucket and bringing right. it in and saying, no, no exactly. it's a mug. Yeah. No, I, w- I was just asking, is, is there a, is, the, is it like one time? You get one no, refill no, right. for 40 no, bucks? No, we're, we're good. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. I mean, That's if you're awesome. going to sit here and drink a half a gallon of beer, we're probably going to call you an Uber or try to be responsible in some way. Of course, way. yes. <laughs> yeah, you should be. Wow. That's a great deal, though. I love it. I love that it concept. I think it's amazing, yeah. I don't, I can't, I don't know of anybody that's done that. I think it's a really cool idea. And I would Usually be, I they make you community. buy the mug. Huh? Usually they make yeah, you join the mug yeah, club. Who wants yeah. to do one more thing you have to keep track of? Yeah, exactly. We don't want to keep track of it. Right. You yeah. don't want to keep track right. of it. Everyone can participate. I mean, man, if you got a hot box, you know, cup rolling around in your back seat, just bring it in and fill it up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. How easy is no, that? I think it'll be fun. I think you're going to see start seeing as this goes on, you're going to start seeing bringing in some crazy stuff, you know. Yeah. Like crazy cups and stuff, and people are going to want to show off their stupid shit they got at their house. You know, it's been sitting on the, not just exactly. Steins, but just 
goofy glasses and shit they got laying around. Or they're going to buy, like, the yeah. filthiest, dirtiest thing they can find just yeah. so they can oh, carry yeah. it in here and make you fill it. Yeah. yeah. Like a big penis cup, and they're going to make you fill it up. You know what I mean? I, I see hey, it happening. Like, you're finally going to put that to use. Well, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you have one of those? I thought you had the stein. Glass, glass <laughs> dildo cups. Yes. I Welcome. Yeah. I thought right. you had right. the we'll, we serve everyone. <laughs> I thought you had the stein where the, the, where the lid was the, the, the head on it. I thought you had one of those already. No, I don't have one of those. Oh, okay. Maybe we saw that at, in Nashville at a, at a gift shop. We did. I think we saw that in Nashville at a gift shop. Pat, just because it's on your mantle at your house doesn't mean it's on the mantle at my house. I don't have a mantle. <laughs> he meant nightstand. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I feel challenged now to find the like naughtiest cup I, I can too. find in the world. I, uh, yeah. Yep. Just to bring I don't know about here. naughtiest. I just kind of an outrageous something, anything to no. bring in and have some fun oh, I'm, with. I'm going to find no, a, I like it. I'm going to be horrible. Cup. It's, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm finding one somewhere. <laughs> I told you. I don't have my phone. I already told you where to look. Well, yeah, Pat's <laughs> house, but I don't uh, think I want to borrow that. That's fantastic. I can't wait. <laughs> Again, I'm excited. <laughs> or a giant boob. There's gonna be something out there. No, soon. it's yeah, he, those boob cups are normal. Those I, are all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Those, yeah. You, know, yeah, you drink out sure. the the nipple. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I'll find those. something. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I didn't know that was normal. Oh yeah, those are all over the place. You find those in apparently like damn Seven Eleven. There's boobs everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you can drink out of boobs everywhere. A boob cup, that's normal, but don't don't you bring a dick cup in here. <laughs> so Brian, how are things going? <laughs> <laughs> we, How's the family? Wow, as we thanks, turn. For, thanks for throwing that back in my lap. That's <laughs> 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 oh, the show takes a weird turn. <laughs> 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 we told you the second of the show. Hey, a more relaxed hey, this is all good. You're yeah. a little more relaxed. Yeah, it gets a little totally fine. X-rated sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes. All right, so we got through the holidays. Everybody made it, I guess. We're yeah, all mm-hmm. here. yeah, we're all here. Yeah, sure. Pat did a roll call. Yeah, he did. He like he did that. <laughs> he <morning>. did actually. <laughs> he said, is, "Is everybody alive?" Well, my roommate <laughs> didn't show. Didn't come home. Oh, really? New Year's, so I started checking the the ah. sheriff's <laughs> web page to make sure because the last time that happened, he was in jail. <laughs> <laughs> One of the guys was in jail. Well, so. then somebody did scare the shit out of us after our uh, Christmas party what? that next morning by saying he was in jail. Oh, He's yeah. Ah. Jail Cowboy. <laughs> Cowboy. He was, though. Jerk. He went, yes. he went to but actually work. He was working at the jail. <laughs> uh, but the next yeah. day, we had nerve from him. They said, I just got out of jail. It was like 4 o'clock next day. Like, yeah, oh, which was about the time they let you out and all that. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. Like, oh, you're a dick. Yeah. You're just being a dirt. <laughs> yeah. That's our wow. cowboy. But uh, so I know when holidays become. Obviously, it's, you know, first of the year, the New Year's resolutions. We, we talked about this one year, and I don't think uh, I don't think we did. No, we did. We did a New Year's resolution for the for the pigs, and we didn't fulfill it. What was we it? We made it a pretty high. It was a stupid high one, especially when you have a new brewery coming in every week. We said we wanted to try a beer from every brewery in Indiana that <laughs> year. And that was two years ago when they just started coming. I mean, they were. Oh, it was man. like wow, every yeah. week there was a new one, and we're like, holy shit. This is, we can't do it. They're popping up That's too fast. Tough. Well, plus we got about four weeks in. We're like, wait a minute, we didn't start a list. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Did we, we have that one? Well, thank know. goodness there's resources like Indiana Untapped. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, mm, nice plug. Yeah. Well, well done. Hey, well thank done. You. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Justin, thanks you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but any of you guys do New Year's resolutions? Is that something? I know a lot. I mean, that's a big thing. No. I tell you what, I've stopped doing that a long time ago because yeah. I've I've just realized that there's nothing but failure involved with it. I, I think they said the the failure rate was like seventy five percent failure rate. Yep. Overall. Yeah. Yep. I, I can tell you this: I go to the gym. I used to go a lot more than I do now, but I still go once or twice a week. And I don't go in January because I can't get in. Can't get in. No. And then about the first of February. It's back to being normal for the rest of the year again. <laughs> so it's literally, it's so yeah. bad. Like the first four weeks of January, I'm like, none of you people are going to be here in a month. Yeah. None of you. Mm-hmm. So I usually take a month off from working out and say, screw it, and I go back in February. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of do the reverse of a New Year's resolution. I stop doing anything healthy until February. It works for me. Hmm. I do that, too. I'll stop doing anything till next February. <laughs> and I'll do it again or next New Year's. My New Year's right. resolution, New Year's resolution yeah. is just. No, you have one this year. Anything. Jordan, what's your New Year's resolution? To find the best Stein ever to bring in here. That's my New Year's yeah. resolution. My goal. Touche. That's all I need. Fair enough. Nice. Fair enough. 
All right. I'm Brendan, you got, do you have one this year? No. No. I've never, ever. You know what? The first one I did was we're going to drink one beer. Every, I, no, I've never done that. Just, <laughs> you know, it just seems so silly. I mean, if it's if you have to if wait for the end of the year to say you're going to do something, I guess. Like, I like just, it. Just do it. i got to give us credit. It sounded great when we said it. Yeah. It was well, you have to idea. go more than like once a week, though. No, we did. We we bought like at the liquor store. We were buying every oh, well, brewery yeah. we could find. Oh well, yeah, we did. Yeah, but we couldn't get to all of them, and that wasn't going on site. That wasn't whatever. And like Brendan said, we just start stop keeping track of. Them. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. We had no idea what we'd have. That's a that's a tall order. Yeah, yeah, very tall. tough. Yeah, especially when six more come in the next week. You're like, yeah. shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Pat, and there's s- resolution. No, 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 I don't bother with those. Brian, no. Yeah, no. I mean it's help. I, I understand why some people do it. So, I mean. And I, I used to, because depending on how your mindset is, you know, it's nice to have a starting point, and uh, you know, I, I can understand why people try to do it mm-hmm. at the new year. It gives you a, it, just a starting point to, to move and and the, count count things towards. I'm all about setting goals. You know, yeah. it, it's it's one thing, but if you've got to set a goal that's going to take you that you're going to measure over the whole year, I mean, you're setting yourself up for failure to start mm-hmm. with. I mean. If you want to set goals like that, set a weekly, set a monthly goal. Yeah. You know, once you achieve that, you know, change your goal. Mm. Yeah. But it, to do one that's going to last your whole year, hey, I'm going to do this this entire year. This is this is the new me. No, I change it's, my goal every morning. It's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, that's why you should drink in the morning like me, and you'll be fine. As an example, I know at some point this year I want to quit smoking, but I'm not going to do it as a New Year's resolution because that, like you said, is setting me up to fail. Yeah. Now I've set myself, oh, January 1st, I'm not going to smoke anymore. Well, that's yeah. crap. We know that's not going to happen. Right. i got to do it when I'm ready to do it. Exactly. Setting it for yeah. January 1st is setting me up for failure, not helping yep. me. Mm-hmm. So exactly. that's why I don't do it that way. You know, when I get a couple months down the road and I feel like it's time, I'll just quit. Exactly. That's what I did last time, yep. you know. But January 1st is not like some magical day that, oh, if I do it on January 1st, that means it's going to be magical. It's right. going to last all year long. It doesn't work that way. But you just said something there. The last time you quit. But you started again, so you never really quit. I did quit. I just started again. Same Does that count? Quit. Yes. Just because you How? start up again doesn't mean you didn't quit. Oh, you if, quit, you quit if you quit for a period. If you quit your job you and you get a new job, did you never work again? Well, <laughs> See? <laughs> that's not the same thing no. at all. That's the yeah, exact same is. thing. <laughs> that is yeah. not the yeah. same thing. Yeah. So you can say, no, I never quit, I quit. a job because I work right now. Well, you can't say that. Because, because you know what? The there last job I quit, I was like, you know what? I just don't want to work anymore. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I quit. <laughs> <laughs> that's completely different. No, it's no, the same it's thing. The same, same thing. principle. Okay. Same principle. Well, I agree on that one. <laughs> so, I always quit. Brendan, come on. Not even close. Okay, thank no. you. <laughs> yes, it was. No, that's poor shit. Yeah. <laughs> the voice don't of reason. Don't have reasoning. to quit permanently. <laughs> you can quit smoking without having to quit permanently. Just because you start up again doesn't mean well, you that's No, that's, that's called pause. You quit for a time. <laughs> that's I'm going to pause smoking. Yeah, I, pause pause smoking I quit on Tuesday, but I started again on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah I quit. Exactly. I said I would quit, and I quit. <laughs> you, you hit the pause button. That's all you did. Do you guys feel better if I said I'm going to quit permanently this year? Uh, permanently yes. is a better thing, yes. Okay. There we go. Yes. <laughs> I just don't have a date set because I'm not going to yeah. set it. Of course not. You've got to be. And I agree with you, though. You've got to be ready. Exactly. And, and, mm. if you and that's what I'm saying about New Year's resolutions. You're exactly. not necessarily ready on January 1st. Exactly. Mm. Right. You want to be and you say you are, but you're not. Whatever you're trying to do has to be on the right terms to do that. If you want to hit the gym regularly, you want to work out, that's great. But January 1st is not a magic day to make that happen. Yeah. It might be. February 12th, you wake up one day and you roll out of bed and you realize your gut's hanging up over your belt and you're like, shit, today's the day I'm hitting the gym. It's not, <laughs> it January take, 1st is not a magic day. That's exactly. why I don't do It didn't take you to January 1st to realize resolutions. that you needed to do that in the first place. Right, exactly. Yeah, That's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. You know? and if Most you of the New Year's resolution then. things aren't, though. Most New Year's resolution uh, things are life-changing type events right. that you've been wanting to do forever. It's supposed to be and you're looking for an excuse. Yourself is now, like, yeah. Yeah. But, but here's the thing I want to ask you, though. Did your wife set a New Year's resolution? No. Did Mickey? No. Really? Really? Okay. No. All right. Your wife? No. Really? No. no. Interesting. And I thought like that, I thought I that percentage was going to be a little higher. <laughs> I think you're seeing that. I don't think as many people are doing the. I don't. I think, think you're right overall. Very, very. I think yeah. it's going down quite a bit. I think that was the kind of a thing yeah. in the past. I don't. You don't see that as much anymore. You it's know, like he's still the big thing is, you know, losing weight or going hitting right. the gym a lot of shit every Absolutely. year, or quitting smoking. Those are the ones that are always there. But again, I do. I think you set yourself up for failure because. A lot of people are expected without setting a goal or any kind of plan. They go, okay, the first year we're going to start hitting the gym, lose weight. 
and then February comes around, they haven't lost any weight, and I go, "Oh, screw you, this!" Yeah, you get frustrated. They don't have they don't have any plan. Yeah. They don't know what they're doing. They mm-hmm. went to the gym a few times, and well, this didn't work. Yeah, they they stopped by McDonald's on the way home and ate three quarter pounds. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I don't yeah. know why I'm not losing any weight. I don't know. <laughs> Damn gym. I drink a diet coke. With yeah, that I burger. had a diet coke. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I got the fish sandwich. Yep. It was healthier. <laughs> right. I love I love that with food. Working in food, I love it. Like people come in, they'll be like, "Oh, you have broccoli and cheese soup today." I'm getting that. Why? <laughs> with a pound but of fudge? Because it's because it's healthy. <laughs> you realize I make it with half and half and cheese, right? Right. It's about as far from healthy as you can. Just because it has the word broccoli in it, <laughs> healthy for you, it is not. I literally spoon shoveled the fat right into this. I did. <laughs> yeah. And they'll be like, "Oh yeah, it's so much healthy." Do you have a bread bowl? I'm like, "No, I don't have bread bowls." <laughs> oh my god. For you healthy eaters, bread bowls are not healthy. <laughs> Making your yep. bowl edible is the worst thing you can do because then you're just shoving that in too. Right. More calories. Like just the taco carbs, salad. Right? Yeah. Oh, mm. yeah. yeah. The tortilla <laughs> that you can The eat. deep fried mm. tortilla that you spoon all that beef and cheese been, into your gut. Nice and deep fried, yeah. Mm. But then it's called salad, so it's healthy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start calling all my food salad. Meat salad salad, salad wings. I'm going to Taco Bell for that, that salad. <laughs> mm-hmm. well, Makes it it. happens to be on a tortilla. I mean, what do you do? <laughs> exactly. Filled with meat and cheese. Any, any and vegetable word or any or the word salad automatically makes anything healthy. Just remember that when you're dieting. Hmm. It literally well, how people Well, maybe it react. is a mindset, though, if you believe that. So fruit beer would... Fruit beer fruit is healthy beer, beer right? Absolutely. <laughs> is, is there, okay, is there really... Is there a grouping of beer called a fruit beer? Is that is that a thing, Brian? So, uh, if you look up in the BJCP style guidelines, you have vegetable and There's fruit. guidelines for BJs? Yes, <laughs> there are. I can look this up. <laughs> what's, that, what's that site? Wow, we just took a turn again. <laughs> <laughs> the BJCP, there, there's style guidelines on there. And so, you can see how, like, and this would be judging uh, mm-hmm. classifications mm-hmm. of different beers. But there is a, there's a vegetable and you know fruit beer category oh, so wow. when people add stuff in there so if you had an ipa that you added apricots to which you know all this stuff you know when we talk about this stuff it's all about balance right mm-hmm. and like, apricots really really go well with uh, american pale ales inherent in um you know in some of the hops that are using in the citrus and whatnot so but as a brewer do you really want to advertise a fruit beer no no, I, I don't, don't think so. No, I don't. <laughs> I, and I, I wouldn't think any brewer would. I think no. you would want to stick with, you know, the aroma of the hops and that kind of stuff. Right. And it's, it's uh, you, you just want to, yeah. I mean, as, as most of us have had, you know, you have the Rattler and the Grapefruit IPAs. And, I mean, they have, you know, however they're getting it in there, whether it's an extract or juice or whatever. I mean, those are fruit beers. Hmm. You know, the Sculpin Grapefruit IPA. Yeah. I mean, people love that beer. Yeah, I don't know why. And... In, so you can't get away from them, but would I order one? Probably not. I mean, I've had I've had Sculpin IP or the Grapefruit IPA. I think it's good, but I mean, it just you know, it's yeah. There's a category there. Eh. The, the fruit beer category is for beer made with any fruit or combination of fruit under the definitions of this category. There Culinary, not botanical definition of fruit is used here. Fleshy seed associated structures of plants that are sweet or sour and edible. Oh so yeah, mango, banana. Yeah, there's a there's yeah. a whole section on fruit beer and fruit and spice beer. Right. Yeah. So mm. if you had, you know, if you had a raspberry lambic or something that you were gonna, I mean, that's you're gonna that's, enter that there. So, but that's still class. That's that's falling under the sours and the ciders, then though, isn't it? It's not really a because f- well, a lambic yeah. a lambic's a sour. Well, so you've got goose and you yeah. have lambic, a cuvee <laughs> Renee. Like, I don't know. There aren't many people that I've met that actually have had this beer. Hmm. And you wouldn't know what you're looking for. You, I mean, it, and that's one of the things that's tough when you go to the liquor store and you're trying to pick up something new. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's domestic or imported, it's just, you just don't know. Right. You know, obviously, we've got a lot of apps and stuff. And so we'll bring one back and we'll taste it. I think, oh, uh, you know, from an education standpoint, it's, it's good. You know there what? Go. Let's just do that right now. Oh, wait, I think this is. We oh, got, oh, we got oh, going oh, on hold on. This Brandon's is funny because we're talking about fruit beer, and I just pulled up. Oh, I thought beers. you were still looking up B- <laughs> BJ guidelines. BJ, yeah. <laughs> oh, those. Are, that's in my. That's no being downloaded. Teeth, right? <laughs> uh, like that's one. Yeah, like they should. Yeah, that's not that common. Yeah, uh, actually, I, I like some guys like that, Jordan. Um, <laughs> Did he just say I like some guys like that, Jordan? 
<laughs> you like a little <laughs> what you, you like a little tooth in your knob. <laughs> uh, Rick Ashley's making some beer. Who? He's gonna be making a fruity pilsner lager. <laughs> Rick Ashley, as yeah. in never like, gonna give you up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rick Rowland. Yeah. He's, Rick make, Rolling. he's making Good beer. Lord. What's Megadeth, he gonna call it? First, Megadeth makes one. Yeah, this has got to be a punchline. I know. Yeah. For, he's exactly. making a he's making a fruit lager with a Danish brewery. Make Megadeth fruity just did the and then fruit lager, fruity lager. Didn't fruity Megadeth lager. just That's do the Canadian? That's worse than it a fruit yeah. lager. <laughs> you, yeah, what's I that? Think you just you had the Megadeth one, didn't you? I did. Now say it was damn good. Well, in the brewery, it's a damn good brewery. A lot of these guys go out. Uh, but it was Canadian, it, yeah. Right? It, it was, yeah. <laughs> but wasn't um, Dave Mustaine like a hardcore <laughs> kind of, um, uh, 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 like Ted Nugent? No, he's, he's an idiot. <laughs> Mustaine's an idiot. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but he, but he they made a damn good beer. He went to the, I mean, oh, yeah. he went to a place to make good beer. Uh, All right. But there's a lot of these guys just go out and put their name on anything and. You know, right, and then they sell it as you know they put their name on what a product. What brewery? What brewery was it? It's the best one in uh, Canada. It's uh, oh yeah, Unibrew. Unibrew yeah. is actually modeled after another uh, another one they have. It's nice malty beer. It's, it's I delicious. Was, it's, I always it's thought a it was Unibrew. Beer. It's a Belgian saison, but it's Ooh, nice. it's a delicious beer. I love Trois Pistoles. Mm. Oh yeah, oh, it's yeah. Ooh. I mean, that is a good beer. Mm. Yeah, Unibrew is an they amazing brewery. So they, he they, went they out. He, some good he work. didn't just go out and hey, will you guys throw my name on something and you know throw some shit beer. He actually went to a, a very respectable, if you know, you know, Unibrow. It's you know a great place, but they make great <laughs> beers and he they made a very good good beer. Yeah. So awesome. It's, I yeah, thought it was delicious. more of a uh, kitschy. I thought so too because most of them are. Yay. Oh, it's the you know <laughs> Kid Rock badass beer. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, here's a good point to do. Uh, take a break. And uh, oh, yeah, I tried that last time. It didn't we'll come work back out here so in a well. minute, and we're going to try some kind of lambic. I'm kind of excited now. So cool. We'll be back in just a moment. All right. Hey, this is Colin and David, and we're with Taxman Brewing, and you're listening to Blind Pig Confessions. Hello, hello, Clarice. Hmm. Oh, we're going. We're rolling. All right. So we are back from a quick break. Quick. Quick. It was fairly quick. It was fairly quick. Hunter and I had to go to the bathroom together. We always do. <laughs> and then we... Uh, that's, that's cute. Now we're <laughs> back at the table. <laughs> and you washed your hands, I know, because you're being watched. I washed his hands. He washed mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, <you're laughs> yeah. Yep. Similar to the feed <laughs> ceremony, yes. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Where were your hands when you washed them? Uh, don't, don't go to detail, <laughs> Pat. It's <Sorry>. okay. <laughs> Some things are le- better left uh, to the imagination. <laughs> well, well, why are there video cameras here? <laughs> 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 well, we have a business on the side. So oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Well, we so took anyway. a break for a reason. Yeah. yeah, we did. Brian, what'd you get us? You brought us out something uh, that I think, uh, I don't think any of us have had this before. Yeah, so no. we were just Perhaps talking about, no. you know, we were talking before the break about fruit beers. And, you know, I think most people uh, associate Lambics with Lindemann's, you know, Fram, Framboise, Framboise or yeah. there's the peach and you've got the crike. But, uh, you know, the Lambic doesn't always have uh, fruit added to it. So the Goose would be the unblended version, and then Lambic is going to take Goose and then blend that with an... Um, the Goose will be aged, and then you'll take and blend that with something younger. And so this is Cuvée René from Lindemann's, and, you know... Probably a lot of people, if they're like, well, I don't like Frambois, which Lindemann's is most, you know, that's what they're probably most n- noted for. Mm-hmm. They might not pick this up, but this beer is fantastic. There's no fruit in it whatsoever. Um, it's an Ode Goose, and it is blended. And so you're going to get, um, you know, this was this was a sour ale before sours became popular uh, in American style. And, you know, they used wild yeast. I mean, that's that's where all these came from, right? Somebody would... Just use whatever came across the wind, and, you know, from their barn, and it would just ferment, and you know that's how they that, that's how they did it. Farmhouse ales, you know, all of those all those yeasts are indigenous to the areas, you know, where those people brewed, hmm. and so when you get something like this, you know, it is sour, but it's not sour to the point where you know I'm just it's just sucking all of the moisture out of my exactly. mouth. Right. You know, <laughs> it's just like totally just sour for sour sake, almost like. Hey, it's 150 IBUs just because we can, right? Yeah. And so it's got it's got those notes that you would expect, right? So there's barnyard, uh, you've got some wet hay, a little bit of horse blanket in there. Um, it's got some tartness to it. Uh, it's fairly dry. 
you've got some nice citrus. You know, there's lemon in there. Um, this beer is just, it's phenomenal. It and is. I just really, I encourage anybody listening to pick it up. Cuvée René, it's the gold label uh, from Lindemann's. And, you know, it could just, you know, change your whole warning, perspective. Warning, you will need a bottle opener and a corkscrew. Yes, right, exactly. <laughs> Don't take it on a picnic and go, oh, great, and then, oh, that yeah. Crap. Yeah, that would, that would, that would so be bad. So, for the listeners, where is Lindemann's Brewery located? You know, it's it's in Belgium. Yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. According to like, all this. The yeah. It's uh, it, it's Lambics and Goose. It's a, it's a Belgian style. It's, uh, it's kind of like champagne, where technically the only true champagne comes from a region. The only true lambics are supposed to, according to all this, come from the, the Belgian Seine River Valley, neighboring Correct. Brussels. Yep. So you can definitely I read that. that I'm not knowledgeable, by the way. I read that on the bottle. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> See, they, do, they, they do a great job of marketing. Yeah. You know? They do. There you go. They do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You definitely pick up that lemon in there. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I'll be the first to tell you, I'm not a sour beer guy at all. I mean, Pat's kind of... And tried to introduce me to a couple of different ones, and I've never really, really liked one. But this one isn't not; it's not overpowering at all. Well, it's um, it's a bit more like a cider. It's so with some of the ciders you get, you know, it's kind of I, I get a little hint of like strong, you know, how strongbow comes across, like a strongbow cider and things mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. But with a bit more tart to it. And oh it's, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, this is definitely tart, and it definitely is you know puckering, but it's not. It's, it's not it dry your mouth, the jaw. like you said. No, no. That, that, back, it, it, that back part of the jaw, we've had a few. Brennan and, and I have been to a couple, and, oh, you know, there's been some cherry tart ones, really, that hurt. Yeah, That right. joint right in your jaw. Oh, you're just man. sitting there going, cool. Oh. Yeah, and you're choking them down because it just, it really, it, it physically hurts. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's weird. Yeah. How no, can it's, it's really do nice. that? Yeah, it's really smooth and really clean, though. I love some good goes, and uh, Distill makes a very good one. Um this is fantastic, and I've had a few of the Lindemans, and yeah, I've, I've never tried this. I've never really picked up or looked at it, but yeah, I see the peach. just had peach on New Year's Eve, but so I've had a few of them, and yeah, they're good. This is absolutely delicious. I like it. Yeah. Clean and, and simple. Yeah. Right. I'm just curious how, especially with these, when they say they use the, you know, airborne yeast, wild, how do you consistently produce product then? It's the, well, so if you're talking about Lambic, that's a, that's a blending thing. So uh, I was just reading today, uh, let's see, which, oh, it was, uh, was it Dad's Hat uh, out of Pennsylvania? Mm -hmm. You know, they were talking about how they get consistency in their product. And if you're doing something unblended, obviously that's very difficult. Yeah. But when you're, when you're, when you're doing old and new, I think, you know, just like a Solera, you know, you're, you're able to, you know, control that process and, and understand the flavor profile that you're going for. It might not be exactly the same, but you know, for the most part, you're you're pulling out the notes that you want, and then by the process of you know blending that together, right. you know, I think that you're able to achieve that. And again, the, the, you know, you go back to winemaking and terrier and, and just the region that you're in, like that's how these things were created in the first place. And so for them, it's no big deal, right? right. I'm just using everything that exists, right. you know, some of the fruit that's, you know, in the vineyards and in, in the apple orchards and all that yeast that already exists out there. Well, you know, that, that's, that's natural. Right. And they're just bringing that in. They don't have to worry about culturing it. They've been using it for hundreds of years. Yeah. yeah. They use a butterfly net. To get the airborne, is that what you're asking? No, no, no. I just uh, <laughs> spider webs. Uh, as I am yes. uh, uh, very OCD and all that, and, and doing things consistently. When you're when you introduce uh, uh, an uncontrolled variable like that, right. you 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 know, and, and that's maybe what people are expecting. There's always going to be a variation to it, yeah. but when you produce a product like this, there's got to be some expectation for the end, uh, for the person buying it, that it's going to have some kind of consistent taste. Mm-hmm. It can't taste like Horse blank, complete horse blank at one time, and, right. and complete lemons the other. So, right. and I understand the blending, but the goes is the unblended, right? Right. So that's yeah. got to be a lot harder. Yeah. Especially yeah. to produce a consistent, especially yeah. as times change. I can understand it. This was all invented back in the old country, and and when things, but you get pollution, you get all the, you know, other things that that mm-hmm. end up changing, have to change that flavor over time, <laughs> and all these environmental factors. It's just interesting to me how. You know the the skill involved in in being able to take 
chaos and try to produce a consistent product. Well, when you're a looking at element. a lot of the mm-hmm. a lot of the vessels that you're using as well, they're infected. You know, going back to the word right. we were using earlier, <laughs> um, they they have those organisms and wild yeast, and th- those are all existing in those barrels because you know that's what they've been using for hundreds yeah, and hundreds of years, and they're able to pass that down. And I they think want someone, that. They want that. Yeah, they want it. And, and you know, someone you know from a modern day standpoint, like Firestone Walker, you know, they're blending things and they're making a consistent product. And and there is an art to it by all means. Yeah. And to be able to do that on a consistent basis, I mean, you just take a beer like this and you can appreciate more about the craft and the art that goes into you know producing something like this. And you know, it's really exciting to be able to you know have this readily available. So. Oh yeah. We just got introduced to Firestone from Monon Beverage at the mm-hmm. Christmas party, and I never had it before. Uh, that Velvet Merlin was just outstanding. Oh, that beer's good. It's outstanding. So I, I, I was in Chicago. I got a few more. Man, they make some really good beers. I want to try some more stuff. I want to find some more of that Velvet Merlin. I don't have anywhere around. Like, I don't think anywhere. I think Chicago may be the closest place around here to get it. But uh, it's delicious beer. But, yeah, I'm, I've been, uh, I was definitely amazed with that brewery. Hey, you know, we know a guy who can tell you where to get it from. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm going to be, <laughs> yeah, be young lamb to hook us up with some more Firestone. So, yeah. so, as I was looking at my phone just a second ago, here's an interesting fact. Did anybody know that Walmart is now jumping on the craft beer bandwagon, so to speak, and they're now selling the malts and everything through oh. Walmart? Well, is that online only, or can you actually walk in the store? Right now, well, it's the home currently, brew- it's online only, okay. but eventually they're hoping to have it in stores. Oh, the homebrew stuff? Wow. <laughs> yeah, like you can uh, buy Breeze Pale Ale, Crushed Malt, 10-pound bag. I don't um, know that I want the Weyermann Pale Ale, Crushed Malt. I don't know. There's something, there's something that just sounds bad about. I know, right? I'm like, Walmart, really? Really, Walmart. And it's already crushed? Yeah, it's, oh, it's wow. already crushed. Walmart or Kroger? Huh. No, Walmart. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> God knows how long ago it was, how long ago it was crushed. Right. It could have been sitting there oh, for. Oh man! Yeah, that, that's yeah. disturbing. Fresh ingredients a little bit. Yeah. is so. I just thought you guys would find that interesting. I'm oh, like, yeah. Walmart's the last place I'm gonna even as a home brewer gonna go buy my ingredients from. Sorry, Walmart, you don't, you're not having that one. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's like the great fermentations. are good. Yeah. yeah. Breathe it all in. Are you still drinking? Don't, it? don't apologize. Yeah, I'm still drinking it. It's delicious. Lord, I'm savoring it's really it. Really good. Oh, okay. I'm savoring. I've learned not to chug beer anymore. Now I will say on Facebook, there's that stupid craft beer chugging group. Have you guys seen this? No. Mm -mm. There's a. If you look it up, it's called craft beer chugs, and these guys go out to the liquor store and challenge each other to chug different craft beers, which to me is the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. Well, that would suck at the liquor store because nine times out of ten, all the stuff there is warm. Well, I mean, the they go home and chill it and everything, but I'm saying they go oh, okay. buy it at the liquor I, store, I then they go home, and they video themselves chugging craft beers. I don't get the point. Yeah, what? Yeah, why? Because they want to spend extra do? money? And yeah. <laughs> it's just weird <laughs> because one guy will be like, oh, I chugged this beer. Are they beer bonging it? So do, do they have like a Facebook page? Yeah. Are they beer bonging really? it? Do they have I joined more, the do they Facebook have more page likes? I to watch the stupidity. Do they have more likes than us? I highly Probably. doubt it. No. Okay, because I was going to say, if so, we might need to change our format. Yeah, we well, we're going to be canning at the end of the month, so we could <laughs> shotgun some beers yes! on camera. How about go. that, right? We do that. Nice. 16 ounce shotgun? Yeah. Really? All right. Can't say they've ever done that. We'll get a beer. No, we'll that get would be, a, <laughs> we'll be <laughs> different. <laughs> we'll, get a, we'll get like a 12 foot beer bong. You can yeah, ha- from the one mezzanine. Pour over up here. The mezzanine yeah. While someone's down at the <laughs> bottom. Go. Oh, yeah. Like I got it. invited into the group because it's a closed group. Craft Beer Chug. Somebody invited me into it, and I didn't know what it was, so I went on it, and that's all it is. They literally are. Why would you spend the extra craft money beers on that? and taking pictures of themselves doing it? I don't hey, I understand it. Twenty dollars. I never got into that shit. Even when I was younger, I it was like when I was a kid. Even when I was younger, twenty one, drinking, I didn't get into the taste Stupid. of my beer. I even when I, I mean, I just I never got the beer yeah, game. Oh, shit. Really? Yeah. Well, I grew up around cornfields. Yeah, we we didn't beer. have a lot of stuff. Yeah, we yeah. shotgun yeah. beer. We were yeah, shotgunning beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. bongs. Oh yeah. Keg stands. It was all. I mean, you had to drink it fast. It was crap. <laughs> mm, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> That's like actually it, very yeah. true. But we back were, then, no, you didn't know. No, you didn't, didn't know, know it was, it was bad we beer. Then. Just trying to, we were just trying to drink as much as we could before we got in <laughs> you trouble. You didn't know it was no, bad. Right? We just thought this is what it was supposed to taste like. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Because back then, I mean, well, they're always you, "Oh, it's an acquired taste." Well, no, it's just because it was shit. Back it was just. Shit. It was just crap beer. <laughs> <laughs> it's just shit beer. Well, before I started, Natty Ice before is not I started an acquired on, taste. <laughs> Nor is Ice House. <laughs> oh, but we drank the crap out of that. Oh, my gosh. I still have a t-shirt. 
I still have an Ice House t-shirt. Now, those beers, oh, to me, man. are made for chugging, though. I, I have no problem chugging an Ice House well, just to get that first one in so I well, can they're drink good a couple for beer more. Pong. They're good, well, they were good for beer pong. Here's the thing. I feel like I could chug the hell out of one of those now after being in the craft uh, beer <laughs> <scene>. like, <laughs> be You know what? They're only 5.6, I think, is what the alcohol yeah, but they're so those, light. Uh, Even then, yeah, I'm yeah. not worried about the alcohol. Kind. They're so light. They're just yeah. to go down like water now. Oh, they taste so Bad. Oh, it's, it's so like horrible. syrupy, like rice and corn syrupy. Mm. <laughs> 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 well, we used to do that every year for uh, at the Memorial Day party. We pick a, a throwback, you know, a Mickey's, a Natty, uh, mm-hmm. a Schlitz if we could find it, which I don't think we ever found oh, any Schlitz dude. around at the time. What was our last I think throwback? the Schlitz is good. I think you would be surprised. Yeah, it's not so now. Yeah. You know what? Well, what we dude. might do, Schlitz and I'm gonna, just going to throw this out there. Schlitz is along lines of PBR we, now. we might just do, like, you know, blind brown bag, of course. Uh, you know, Schlitz. Just judge it on its own merit, right? Because right. it's not – you're not going to compare – Old style to that is such a great show idea. <laughs> like like that. You're not going to compare old style to you know this cuvee Rene, right? It, yeah. Like what you right. know, Michelob is a really good. It's it's a good American lager, right? Like mm-hmm. you know, and yeah, it is. yeah. So it's, I think that might be an interesting show just that's to a, see. Like everybody hams. brings a different one in a brown hams, bag. Hams, hams would be I sweet. Like it. You know, uh, if we can still find Olympia, there was a Wisconsin <laughs> Wisconsin club. Have you guys ever heard of that? No. Uh-uh. <laughs> no. Uh-uh. I used to drink uh-uh. Milwaukee's that, Best, that though. That was a pledge. Yeah. That was a pledge drink when I was in college. Oh. Yeah. Nope. yeah. That was Wisconsin what I would drink a lot of Olympia. Uh-oh. Olympia Gold yeah. and Rainbow right. Beer. You've heard it here. The next show <laughs> is <laughs> this brown right bag. here. You know, that, that, yeah, it's beer. It's but are we? Beer. But is, yeah. there a, is, there, is it brown bag and standard brands? It's not brown bag and craft. No. 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 Right. So craft is excluded. Okay. Brown bag and... Yeah, you got throwback. Yeah, you call it the throwback yeah, brown bag. Yeah, you got to yeah find your throwback. You know, yep. just just do it. Yeah. Like, brown bag and I'll commercial like commercial brand. This commercial is happening. Brand, yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. yeah. This yep. is happening. We did that. Yeah. We we, we oh, called. Yeah. Uh, well, we used to call that. We called it. We did that with shots at one point. We called it mystery shot roulette. Oh yeah. But uh, we just <laughs> put all a bunch of ping pong balls into a bucket, and we grabbed like like thirty of those one dollar you know liquor <laughs> shots. You know the really nasty ones. Oh. Stuck them in a bucket. Put a number on all of them, and when you, you drew your <laughs> you drew the ball, you, you, just, had to, you just had to you just had to pick that one and drink it, and you couldn't say anything. You just had to drink it all right then and there before the next one could go over. And there were a few safety there were a few safety ones in there that that like uh, you know it said you know go skip or I think we made up some bad ones like go lick Jordan's bald head or take a shot. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. Well, was, we, some of them we used to really, get really nasty. drunk when we were younger. Yeah, <laughs> we used to do the whole uh, the, the whole hairy buffalo thing, where you'd bring yeah. something, everybody bring something. Well, that's all in one. But, yeah, that's well, nasty. but that's the thing. It either turned out really good sometimes, yeah. or it was the most vile thing you've ever tasted in your life. Oh my gosh! Oh, it's so bad sometimes. Well, one of the things I used to do, you know, at just random office where I was working at the time, you know, we would bring in like. You know, people are always like, well, this beer's my beer, or, you know, this beer's, you know, and you're like, really? Like, really? Can you tell the difference? And like, oh, yeah, you know? And so, literally, we would set up uh, three cups. You couldn't see them. And so, it was Coors Light, Bud Light, and Miller Light. And we would see how many people could actually, de- you know, detect the difference between right. the two and, like, get it right. Literally, you'd have ten people. Maybe two people would get it right. Oh yeah, yeah. that's it. Like people just you just can't. You can't your pals don't. You, it's funny they watch like uh, what Gordon Ramsay the show and they they do like uh, the blind taste test. You have these chefs eating you know a, a cheese and they you know what is that watermelon? You're like what the right. fuck? How do you get that wrong? <laughs> but when you can't, that's part of your senses. Yep. Yeah. If you can't see and you don't know and you're not sure, yeah. I mean you're you. Yeah. I mean. Hmm. And a lot of that stuff, so, I mean, it does taste pretty familiar. I mean, yeah. I like that. I think I'd be able to pick out Coors Light just because I feel like it's so much waterier than the other ones. To me. Yeah. Coors I mean, Light is extraordinarily watery. Like, it has no beer flavor to it. But I Miller, know, Miller Light and Bud Light, I could see being I tough. We'll have see, to see. I, feel, I feel like it has more than Miller Light, though. Really? I, yeah. I, I, I don't see, know. I was a Miller Light drinker. I, I, again, different palates. Yeah, it know. is. It's I mean, crazy. Uh, you know what it, I've, it never, is. I've never seen? I saw commercials. I keep seeing commercials for it, but I've still yet to ever see anyone actually order one. The Mick Ultra. I, oh, I've I seen people order it. I've have never you? seen yeah. anybody order that at a bar. But it's on anybody. the TV, you know, with... The, you, just after you work out, you know, you want a beer that's not got a lot of calories to and it. And I want it in a skinny can, so then, of course, you're going to oh, yeah. it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> 
But I've never actually seen anybody go up to the bar. They'll, they'll go, give me a Miller Lite, give me a Bud Light, or give me a Budweiser. I've never seen anybody, I need two Mick Ultras, please. Uh, I've seen people <laughs> drink Mick Ultras. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. I yeah. have never seen it. It's only yeah. like 64 calories, man. Come yeah, on. Yeah, because I, I think it was at Claude's and somebody made me drink it because they go, oh, it's not that bad. It was that bad. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was somebody, cause, so somebody was there drinking this. So I, I, I've seen people order it. You a shot. It was like Miller 64 one. when it came out. I think it's probably cool. still out, but well, yeah. Yeah. it's the same kind of beer. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. for it's it's that New Year's resolution thing. If you still want to drink beer, but you want to be on a diet, drink yeah, but never Miller 64. Yeah. What I'm saying is I know some people like will buy it at home. You know, oh, I'm gonna, but I've never literally seen someone. It, it almost seems like are they embarrassed? You're gonna just yes. <laughs> <laughs> would you, you be? That in Possibly really? yes, I would be. Yes. <laughs> it's for that? my wife. I'm yes. sorry. Hi, you have any Sema, please? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pat, you know Jay Jones left the six pack of that in my fridge like last year. And it's still there. Zima? No. Oh, okay. I was gonna say no. you can't get Zima, but in ja- in Japan, Japan now. I think, yeah. it was uh, a no, that's a really? throwback. The Mick Ultra, yes. Yeah. He brought it over into my craft beer fridge, and he's yeah. like, hey, dude, I brought some beer. I'm like, cool. He opened it, and I go, are you shitting me? No, you me? didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> no, he's you like, didn't. He's like, what? Beer? I'm like, dude, yeah, that's, that, that's not any good. You just need to throw it away. I'm like, that's never going to get older. Right are you kidding? There's nothing they <laughs> can do. <laughs> even, <laughs> even, <laughs> even Mick Ultra aged is bad. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's not going to make it any better. No. Oh, I didn't know any better. A, oh, I had a couple of those, and I'm not going to lie. I would like to have the Zima as a throwback. You know, strictly just just to taste it again and go, holy crap! What was well? I you thinking? may as well throw the purple passion in there. Yeah. I mean, oh, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, serious. There you go. Yes, right? and I some know. night train. Oh, yep. Oh, oh yeah, mad dog. Oh, yeah. Twenty twenty. Dude, we okay, never so went down that road. <laughs> so we went to a Guns N' Roses concert and got liquored up on Night Train oh, just you because have you had night to. Train if you're going My to, buddy yeah. puked from the top of Market Square Arena, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it was straight purple. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that happened. Mm. See, yeah. then that begs the question: Do you need a malt liquor? You know, you got to. You know, if you're doing the brown bag thing, yeah. you got. Oh, I think you got. Yeah, that's you another show. You got Colt Forty Five. You got, yeah, yeah. You got I, I was going back to Colt Forty Five. No, I, I want to throw bear. one in there to see if someone thinks it's a beer. Mm-hmm. You know, who really can't? You know, who really can't tell? Hey, it's a Colt so Forty Five. Sure, it's a beer. For this show, we're all bringing in. Just we're going out and picking one throwback beer and bringing it in a brown bag, right? Yep. yep. One or one or two, one each. That'd be. I don't know. Is there what's two? the stipulations? We can do two. Two, yeah. Two. Why not? Two each, that's fine. Uh, as each. long as I don't have to buy two six packs. No. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you go somewhere they sell like a yeah, single. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I, so yeah, I'm yeah. saying you so gotta find we, the right place. Then are we gonna line up glasses and we're all gonna pour in like have eight in front of us and try all eight? Is that what yeah, we're going for? Yeah, and I think for? what you need to do is what we could do is just rate them, right? Mm-hmm. So you what which one you would prefer. And then we'll <laughs> just kind of rank them all and see where everybody so comes So basically, I'll know, I'll know what two of the eight are, and you'll know what two of your eight are, but we won't know what the rest are. I don't know. Maybe I, we could have somebody pour I, I them off. I think we need to do it. I think they pour yeah. them someone behind yeah, there. Somebody so we behind can't the see bar. The now, can we, are we going to do this here? Are we allowed to do that here? Are we allowed to bring them in? We just do that. Yeah, I can I can purchase them and, and bring them in, yes. Okay, so we'll just got you. Yep, yep. All right, so see how that works. What you guys will do, you'll send me your... Yeah, send me what your lineup is, and right. then I'll get it, and we'll uh, we'll do it up. All right. Mm. So we just put numbers on the bags, and then number on the cup. Yep. So that it's hidden, but that way we can't see. Because right. you know, if someone brings in a Mickey's, you know. <laughs> well, we don't want to see the bottle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna give it away. <laughs> True. Yeah. Huh. I like. If this. I come in with my like forty this. of Coke forty five. <laughs> I might give it away too. Well, if I, I come in with my with my uh, bottle of Colt Forty Five in a paper bag, I might have a hard time just not drinking oh, yeah. it myself because that's <laughs> how it's supposed to be drank. Mm. Yeah, right out of the paper bag, pop the top and go. Damn Skippy! Absolutely. All right, I used guys. to drink a lot of Forties when I was younger, man. The Miller Light was in Forties, yeah. High Life was in Forties. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, you we get, were you get stupid. Like black belt velvet or Big Bear for a buck twenty five for a Forty. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> oh, we also oh, used to drink gallon bottles of Southern Comfort too. We weren't oh. smart. Big Bear. I don't think I've ever heard of that. Big Bear, Bear, really? Big Bear was a malt. It's a malt beverage. They think they still make it. Oh, wow. Big Bear. Hmm. We got it up in Michigan. I don't, I don't think it's a Michigan beer, but it was up. We got a lot of it up there. Big Bear. The buck 25 for a 40. I think it still might be a buck 25. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was disgusting. I'm not going to lie. I, I bought that uh, stuff oh, from Walgreens that one time that for us to try the Great Divide or whatever the hell their brand yeah. name of their beer was. Holy shit, that was bad. Yeah, I oh, got the, the full flavored yeah. lager and it was horrible. Oh my god, it was awful. They make their own beer at Walgreens. Yeah, 
What? Yes. I'm not joking. They have their well, own it's, brand. It's, it's well, they don't make it at somebody, Walgreens. Somebody, well, I, yeah. somebody makes somebody the beer makes for them and they put their them. own label on it. It's called like Great yeah. Wall or Great Divide or something yeah. shit like that. And it has like it says Walgreens on it. Well, yeah. well, no, it's only available well, at Walgreens. It'll tell you that it's well, a Walgreens that's like beer. Costco where, you know, half their cans say soda and then they have a beer over there. I think that literally just says <laughs> beer. Beer. Yeah. <laughs> well, no. Uh, well, wait. CVS or Walgreens has, it says beer on the can. It, yeah, it's one yeah. of those. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, 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 it's beer. It's, that's all it says is yeah. beer. <laughs> and I think the can might be white yeah. and it yeah. might just be. The generic. The old it looks like one of those, yeah. those <laughs> government <laughs> beers or something. Yeah, the that's old like white yes. label with black. Yes. Oh, yeah, the nice. old school generic wall nice. of generic foods you used to see at Cubs yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 20 years ago. <laughs> Beer. <laughs> Crackers. Yeah. Yeah. You're paying less because there's absolutely no market. <laughs> we are not creative at all. What's Every there? single thing Beer? was made. The beer was made with the soup can. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's still some byproduct. Oh, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Huh. Awesome. Yeah. That sounds delicious. So, <laughs> so it sounds like we uh, we have a plan for our next show. We here. do. It's going to be awesome. Pat went whoopee. No, I meant <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, that's what I was working on. <laughs> so we have a plan for our next show here, and uh, that'll be coming up here in March, the very beginning of March. So looking forward to that one. Need people just to come out and uh, uh, be here for this. That, yeah, that, that, that should be that, be, that yeah. should be so fun. I like the ranking though. I I do yeah, because yeah. now we have. You know, a panel of you know professional judges like ourselves. Well, there's that part, <laughs> this right? Is the right. Least, <laughs> yes. This is the least <laughs> worst. This is of the them least all. horrible beer. So that when you pick, it's fun them. to see what gets picked from high. I mean, right? right. That's exactly. exactly. See so that when so you're the only the one that picks the worst, actual worst beer in the thing, we can make fun of you the rest of the night for it. That's the winner. <laughs> <laughs> that's your winner. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That works. Yeah. yeah. All right. See. Well, we got to wrap up for tonight. But thanks again, Brian, for hosting us and being on the show again. We appreciate it. And, yeah. Uh, hey, love guys. being at FDR, man. Absolutely Thank you. love this place. We'll be back here again soon. Yeah. Thank thanks, you. guys. Thank you. There's a place called a gin mill way down in the slums. There's a place called a gin mill way down in the slums. My baby goes that night and stays till the morning comes.